on third, but heading for the front. Mark Allen settles into his own pace. On a course like Hilton Head, the leaders will average almost 28 miles an hour for 25 miles, holding back almost nothing for the 10-kilometer run to come. It's what they train for, of course. Triathletes have always been masters of endurance. They must be masters of speed now as well. And Allen is one of the best at both. A few years ago, his training partners in San Diego nicknamed him The Grip, short for the grip of death. If you ride with Mark Allen, be prepared to move. He doesn't have too many speeds short of all out. One of the more familiar... Hi, everybody. That was a clip from the 1987 USTS National Championships in Hilton Head, North Carolina. More on that later. But first, I want to tell you about this triathlon history podcast that I'm starting. It's only taken me nearly 15 years to hit the record button after reading a book called Podcast Solutions back in 2008. I've also had two or three false starts, but with a reorganised work schedule, I've got way more time to dedicate to research, writing and recording. And once again, I'm enjoying the process of preparing the shows, tinkering with the gadgets and experimenting with audio quality and editing. So I'm Ross, I live in Munich, but I'm originally from the UK. Before moving here in 2017, I lived in France for about 15 years. Away from this microphone, I'm a primary school teacher, and I've been competing in triathlons since 1989. The Streak is actually a chapter in Mark Allen and Bob Babbitt's 1988 book, Total Triathlete. As well as anecdotes from Allen's early life, the story of how he got into triathlon and tales of some memorable past races, the book essentially takes us through the GRIP's 1987 season. If you don't have a copy of Total Triathlete, you should definitely buy one. Pick up a copy of Dave Scott's Triathlon Training while you're at it. I'll link to both books in the show notes. After getting fifth at a pre-ITU unofficial World Sprint Championships in Perth, Australia, Allen's US season starts with his streak of winning eight races in a row, including three USTS events. Those Perth races were won by Erin Baker and Rick Wells. I've got a magazine article from the May 1987 issue of Triathlete. It's titled Upset in Australia. The Big Four Get Hammered Down Under. So I'm planning to do a full podcast episode on that event in the future. Alan's run of victories in 1987 ended at those USTS Nationals in Hilton Head just two weeks before Kona. For the first time that season, he wasn't able to pull back Mike Pig's lead after the bike. The second half of Total Triathlete deals with Mark's arrival in Kona and the build-up to the Ironman, then race day and how his dream of winning comes unravelled as Dave Scott passes him late in the run. Finally, with four miles to go, Dave Scott slips by a walking Mark Allen under cover of a pace car. Mark Allen never sees him. It was a calculated move by Scott, just in case Allen was capable of taking an eight count on the cone of blacktop and then duking it out again in the final miles. But Allen, who ran to victory in Dallas and France and Japan and Australia, Allen, the man on the cereal box, Mr. Triathlon, now knew that he was back in the Iron Man, back on Dave Scott's turf. The final four miles would give Mark more than enough time to wonder why. Why was he invincible around the world, everywhere, everywhere except here, where Dave Scott was king of the long, hot road. Rereading my now tattered copy of Total Triathlete recently reawakened my interest in triathlon history, so I decided to start buying up old triathlon magazines on eBay, mainly from the late 1980s and early 1990s. Some of them I'd previously owned, but they hadn't survived various international house moves and loft purges. Back then, the top athletes used to compete against each other regularly and across all distances. The racing style was gun to tape, the equipment was simple, and the training was fairly uncomplicated. The late 1980s is also when I started following the sport as a fan, about a year or so before doing my first triathlon in May 1989. 
So on this podcast, I'll mainly be using my collection of vintage triathlon magazines to take a deeper look at the articles inside. Stories that inspired me as a young triathlete and some that I've discovered recently. Whenever possible, I'll be talking to people who were there, as well as exploiting the triathlon history resources available on YouTube. So expect future episodes about the big races, the different race series that existed, the athletes, the bikes, the clothing and kit, and occasionally triathlon politics and controversy. I'll also be building my own experiences into the narrative to help explain the triathlon scene at the time. And although I'm starting with the late 1980s and early 1990s, I'll definitely be exploring other periods. Another goal of this project is to visit historical triathlon venues and whenever possible, do a casual triathlon to recreate the course. I'll record audio to explain the history of the race and make a short film for the Streak Podcast YouTube channel. Some ideas local to me include historical courses such as Rot, Schliersee, Algoy, the Munich Regatta Strecker and the Munich Olympic Park. Thinking further afield, the Nice course used in the late 1980s, Embrun and some of the early France Iron Tour stages are definitely on the docket. In early July, I did the 1991 Windsor Triathlon course with my brother. This first edition of the race was part of the newly launched Five Race 220 magazine triathlon series. We recorded some audio that I'll include in a future podcast. And I've just started work restoring a 1980s triathlon bike. I'm going to document how it goes here and on YouTube. At the beginning of 2021, I bought some Scott DH bars, the first aero bars to be used in triathlon. So I knew that eventually I'd want to build a period correct bike around them. I've also written a podcast telling the story of the Scott DH bars, which will be published as episode three of the Streak podcast. Every episode is going to be accompanied by show notes in a long form blog post style that will include my podcast script, links to anything I talk about in the episode and a list of the historical sources that I used. There'll also be an image gallery of relevant magazine articles as well as the links to the full magazine issues in PDF form. You can find the show notes for this first episode at thestreetpodcast.com forward slash podcast forward slash one, the number one, not O-N-E. At the moment, I've got 12 episodes finished, so I'll get them out as soon as possible before trying to drop into a weekly schedule, aiming to put out a podcast every Friday with bonus episodes if I have time. This project is mainly a fun experiment for me, but if other people like it, then that's cool too. I'll leave you now with another clip from Hilton Head in 1987. So the question here at Hilton Head has not been so much whether Mike Pig would come off of the lead, but rather how big a lead. And that question will be answered, no doubt, very quickly. The spectators crane for a look as Pig rounds the turn. Is Allen in sight? How far back is Mark Allen? Pig himself has no time for questions. If Allen is too close, he will know soon enough. And the race for first place will be over, and the pain of competition will be sharpened by the pain of defeat. But until that happens, until Allen goes by or until Pig crosses the finish line alone, there is nothing to do but run. Pig's transition is fast. He stops his bike, pulls his shoes on, grabs his shirt and goes. Ten seconds. Now it's Allen's turn. A look up the road and there he is, breaking out from behind Macklin Clark, driving toward the Hyatt parking lot. It's a bad sign, for Allen at least, that he is not alone. He's been able to drop everyone but Pig all season long. But there was a sharpness to him, a snap that seemed missing on the bike course today, an impression that now stands confirmed. On the other hand, this is a triathlon. It takes three events to win the race. Heavy legs on the bike don't always translate into heavy legs on the run. Sometimes, in fact, just the reverse is true. And Allen is one of the most experienced veterans in the business, a five-time winner of the Nice Triathlon in France, second last year to Dave Scott at the Bud Light Ironman in Hawaii. The man won't panic. He's been in tight situations before. Allen heads off in a minute and 40 seconds to make up. Mike Pig has grabbed his precious minute and a half lead. The question is, can Allen grab it back? 